Hi, uh, I'm Karen. Uh, today we are looking at uh, ways of keeping our hips mobile enough so we can get up and down easily, effortlessly and maintain hip mobility as we progress in age. Um, it's really interesting to me, I'm in my 50s, so I'm looking to maintain a healthy body for as long as I can. So I'm hoping these hip movements will really, really help. Um, to start off, we're going to, well, I'm sitting on something, so just so you see, it's just simply, it's just a blanket folded up. Uh, if you don't have a blanket, everyone's got a blanket. <laughs> you could maybe use a cushion and fold that up. Um, or if you've got yoga equipment, you could use a block or a few blocks. Um, I'm about to go cross legged I'll just go cross legged Padmasana, lotus pose, uh, I can do, but I'll just show you just simple cross legged And the higher up you are, the easier it is to sit cross legged if you've got tightness in your hips. So let's just take a moment just to ground ourselves, take our awareness in so we become a little bit more prepared and a little bit more self-aware before we start some movements. It's a nice place to start from. So you can sit with the hands resting on the knees. If you like a more um, traditional yoga felt sense, you could turn the palms up and join the tips of the thumbs and first fingers. Just notice how that feels. I like that, but how does that sit with you? And send your awareness down to your seat to the roots of your being, down to your hips, your pelvis. I notice the weightiness, the heaviness of the hips and pelvis. From that heaviness, can the spine grow out of that heaviness? So I'm not sitting up rigid and creating a ramrod spine, but just sitting up, just so it feels natural, some natural curves in the spine, the shoulders are relaxed. If you wish to close your eyes, you can do. And if you can sense your breath easily, just stay tuned into your breath for a few moments. And if you've got a really active mind and it's all over the place, maybe a tactile sense of a hand on the belly, a hand at the center of the chest on the heart space or both hands to the heart, whatever works with you. And having that felt sense of the breath, sometimes that's really quite soothing. And as the breath, finds a natural steady rhythm. Just following that for a few moments. I quite like inquiring after myself. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you today? How have your movements been until, up until this point? How's your energy? How are you feeling? Just checking in. And then giving yourself permission to move with kindness and compassion. If yoga philosophy is, if, if yoga philosophy is of any interest, ahimsa. Bringing that onto your mat with kindness and compassion for yourself. And so when everything settles down and you feel that you're in a good place, ready to move forward with an open mind and an open heart, we can open our eyes. Okay, so I'm going to lean back and just 
first of all noticing the position of the legs i'm going to have them in straddle or upavista kunasan just sitting legs apart and just letting the legs roll in and out so noticing there's a lot of foot movement foot action going on here that led taking that awareness up the knee action out and in and then hip action hip in and out in and out so i'm sitting up and i'm just observing how that feels and then we're going to lean back and use the hands to support the spine and then noticing does that make a difference do you get more femur thigh bone movement out and in or less just observing in a very kind open-minded open-hearted way okay so i'm going to bring one leg behind me now i've tucked my toes under um, and if that doesn't work for you, you might prefer to have your foot on your pillow, you block your cushion, so you can actually take that angle out of the knee, or you may be perhaps able to get to curl under. So it just stops too much rotation in the knee. So I'm going to go back to how I was before, with the toe curl back in towards me. So one hand on the outer rim of the pelvis, hold on to your pelvic bones, hip bones, and then just glide your hip forwards and back. And forwards and back. So it's more or less going on a diagonal. And I'm not limiting movement in the spine, I'm letting the spine come along for the ride. And this hip is actually lifted off the ground. Something's going on outside. <laughs> and then I'm going to sit up more. And then bring the hands onto either of the pelvic bones. And then rocking them forwards and back, just like I would in a cat-cow tilt. So you could do movement. You could invite the breath to synchronize with the movement. So if I offer a breath and movement, I'm offering what works for me. And it may not work for you, so you can decide what works for you. Okay, let's move on to the other side. So bringing the back foot around, taking the other foot behind. Again, using your pillow, some support if you need that support. The toes are roughly in line with the knee. Hand down, there's a bit of support and then letting the pelvis move forwards and back. And the breath that I was taught for this was to breathe in as your hips go forward and breathe out as they draw back. Feel free to experiment with that. Can you feel the movement inside the hip joint of the rolling of the thigh bone? Last one. Okay. And then more of a cat-cow movement. So again, this one I was taught to breathe out and this one breathing in. So the thigh bones in this one are relatively still. It's the pelvis rocking over the thigh bones. Last one. Okay. So. Now I'm going to take both feet and swing them off to the side. And so uh, let, me, let me show you a couple of ways actually. Um, then I'm going to swing them out around in front of me and over to the side. So now my spine goes into this lovely side flexion and I'm getting this nice hip movement in at the same time. So if this is quite challenging to get the legs around, we can lean back like we did before and we can take 
some of the weight off the hips and a bit more a different space in the hip joints and then that, that might work for you so these are really nice movements for the hips okay now then we can take that to kneeling and if that's not comfortable some things just don't work for everybody you could actually bring your blanket up place it over your ankles like that and then we can still get a little some of the side to side shift or you might need to place it behind your knees because I can do it that's it and you can still get your side to side shift okay so there are your options you've probably got going if you can do it like this so then I'm going to shift my hips oh from side to side so as you can see without the equipment we go a bit further but that's because my hips can so if you need the equipment use it similar to what we were doing but this time laying the hips shift and I'm actively lifting myself up lowering myself down so she starts to get this lift it's almost like you're then coming up from sitting lifting up from toilet seat toilet seats always come into mind when I think about how functional this is okay one more to each side this is a you've probably done quite a bit okay so from here I'm going to come onto my back draw the knees in towards the chest without using the hands to start off with and then squeeze the thighs towards the chest hold that for a moment or so and release and let go we're going to that a few more times so actively squeeze your thighs into your chest so you can see this is the same as my last lesson squats and release sometimes it's quite nice just to get that movement action line on your back and you probably find that your breath has no option but to work with you on this Let's do one more. So now I'm going to take the knees wider because here they were quite um, towards the chest like we would be if we were sitting or squatting. So let's take them out to the side and do that same thing. Just squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Now there is some other work going on in the back. Squeeze and release. Okay, we're going to go back to the first position. This time we're going to keep the tailbone down. So the back is going to have a curve in and then now we've placed a little bit of a barrier there or a blockage or something that's going to prevent the movement. So now this time as we squeeze, you probably find that your legs are going to shake a bit more because now we're targeting more of just into the legs. And can you feel that difference? So I don't know if you can see, but my back, I can just just about skim my fingers through. So I'm not actually pressing my back down. I'm going to do the same with the knees wider, keeping the tailbone almost anchored down. And then you get that nice movement. So sometimes when we put a barrier on, a blockage on a movement, it feels like it limits our movement, but we're actually taking it into a different area of the body. Last one. Okay. And then we're going to be passive. So I'm going to hold onto my legs, let the tailbone lift, take a few breaths and just completely relax into the hip joints if that's at all possible. And if it's, you could do knees, you could hold onto the thighs, you know, both work really well. Sometimes I play around with 
one or the other. And if you hold on a lot of tension, just letting the breath slow down, that might help. Take two more breaths. And we can rock up to sit. We can roll to the side and come up from the side. So I'm going to shifty myself back further down the mat. <clears throat> so a lot of that work was with flexion where we bring the knee in towards the chest. So I'm just going to do a few from um, cat position from Mary Jason into extension. So I'm going to flex the heel. Push the heel up until I feel a stretch sensation through the front of the leg. I'm just going to hold that just to start to shake a little bit and not too much because I don't want the hamstring to start cramping. And then bring the leg down. <laughs> Other side, flex the foot. Push the foot up. So my arms are working to hold me up. I should have mentioned that before. And I'm just really using that. I find if I do this with a bent knee, I tend to not lift the pelvis too much. So I keep more or less a neutral spine. Keep that until you start to feel you're just about getting tired. And then down. <laughs> now let's work around the joint. So bring your knee in, hold it there and then slowly take it out to the side and circle it all the way around behind you. And then when you're bringing it back, take it in, it's up towards you, circle it out and back. So nice, big rotations of the leg, discovering all this lovely movement motion inside the hip joint. And we haven't changed direction, so let's change directions when the leg is behind us. And it's quite active. I'm actually feeling like I'm almost pulling the thigh bone into the socket. And if you're not quite sure, and that's really slowed my movement down. And if you're not quite sure, just sort of do it a little bit more free flow and see how that feels. And then you'll feel the difference. And it really does bring a lot of um, strength work inside the hip joints. I'm hoping I'm using the right phrases. One more. And then just observe how that hip feels compared to the one. Now, if your wrists get a little bit sore or tired, just turn the hands out. I've gone wider than my mat, fingers facing out. So let's repeat on the side. I'll be a bit quieter on this side. So flexion, hold the knee in towards you, draw it in, hug it there. Just keep it hugged as you move it all the way around and keep that hugging in feeling. And make sure that you go across the midline to the other leg. Okay, so I'm be quiet now so you can explore this motion and movement in your own hip, this side. And then let's reverse. And if you're concentrating and focusing, you might find it's really slowed your breath down. Last one. And then bring the knee down. How do your hips feel? What's the sensation that you've got? Okay, so let's come back to kneeling. So getting up and down involves quite often mobility in the feet, which we sometimes bypass. So let's just get some flexibility or mobility into the toe joint. So checking that your little toe comes along for the ride and doesn't try and escape 
<laughs> the lovely sensation of being curled under. And if it's too strong, this toe stretch with the back of the foot, you could sit up and that takes some of the body weight off or you could lean forwards. So feel free to temper this. And then what happens if we just sit? Can you relax into it? <laughs> Is that at all possible? And your face will tell you, so if you're pulling a screaming face then, and your face can't relax, then you know that you need to change, dial it down a little bit. And sometimes I like to do talk just to distract you if, I'm, if I know I'm in a position that you need a little bit of help to stay there for a little bit longer. Okay. So I don't know if you've guessed where we're going next. Top of the foot. Okay, so it might just be simple as sitting like this with the toes stretched out behind you. That might be plenty ample. Uh, top of the foot and into the ankle. If you start to lean back, your knees might just float up. <laughs> There's a little bit of um, bone movement there. And then I'm aiming to stretch out into the top of the foot, maybe round about the ankle area more than anything. So again, we can sort of temper this to where we can hold with a relaxed face, if that is at all possible. Checking your shoulders are relaxed. Can you smile either inwardly or show a smile to yourself? Softening the breath, a few more breaths. Ooh, ooh, okay. Now from there, so you could lift the thighs up and bring yourself into a squat like that. And if that was too hard, you can support yourself until you feel that you're ready. So even this action, this rolling backwards and forwards until you get some more mobility into the toe joints is really good. So if we're going to do that, I feel like we can do a few of those actually with the knees out to the side as well. In fact, that's really nice in the hips. Some nice movement there. Okay, and then we can find that potentially we can come up to into our molasses. So in our squat position, so I always get my heels down. So for me, that is easy to do to get the heels down. I'll fiddle with my collar. Holding on to mat, I want to say blanket, hold on to your mat. And if you pull forward on your mat, then that might help too. Or if the heels don't go down, then pulling on your mat can be really, really helpful. Let's take a few more moments there. Okay, so from here, we're going to hopefully straighten the legs. So I'm going to push down through the feet, using straightening the legs to come up to stand. Okay. So we're going to go up from standing here, bending the knees, coming back down again. Again, heels can be lifted, heels can be down, pushing through the feet. Really, what we want, want to do is work the leg muscles and into the buttock, everything all around the hip to get up and down. So he, here we are going up and down. And if you need more help, please feel free to get more help. But this is a really nice way just to start off our getting down and up. And then we can then maybe add some things onto this. So we're going to see now if there's another way 
to come down and up. So I'm going to take one leg back behind me and then just come down to kneeling. Changing the sides and then back up to stand. So I need to change my sides, otherwise I just keep coming back up on the same leg. So I can come down into a kneel, change sides and come back up. So here, change sides. We've got toe work. Some core work, as you can probably feel as you're going down. A lot of hip work. Okay. So when I'm at home and I'm down on the floor, I pay attention sometimes and I notice that I keep getting up on the same side. So I always try and keep this one very active on both sides so we don't just tend to at one side. I always favor my stronger legs. So that's a really nice way of working both hips evenly. Okay. So then we're gonna come down to the ground as though we've gone all the way down for something. I don't know, you're trying to get something off the floor. So we've managed to get ourselves down. So now what ways can we find to come up without using the hands if at all possible and if it's not possible use your hands so i'm just going to take some different ways of coming down and potentially coming up so now i'm looking for my legs to move into different positions So feel free to make sure that you're moving your legs in different positions. So this, what we've done before, is very what we call sagittal plane, forward and back. So I'm now looking some different ways of getting down with my legs going at different angles and also getting back up. This little sort of curtsy one is quite nice. And also a little bit of balance challenge as we try and get back up. And again, I'm just doing different foot positions. This one I'm just repeating. And I don't know about you, but you start to feel everything, the legs start to work. And then this may or may not be accessible. So what I am gonna do is cross my legs and then see and I get all the way down and all the way up. Ooh, a little bit of straw then crossing the other way. And then let's see what happens on this side. All the way down and all the way up. So if you don't have hips that do this, don't worry, we've got lots of other options. So again, just looking at all the ways This time I've got a smaller foot behind. It's almost like a single leg squatting down. And we can go into our, back into our half, down and up. Especially if it gets tiring going all the way down and all the way up. Just some little nice half squats. And I do do my half squats my malasan in different ways. So I don't always just keep the feet forward. Sometimes I turn them out a little bit, do some a little bit wider, but it feels a bit more like um, plie. I don't do ballet. <laughs> but I, ha I have let my knees and my feet, you can probably see that they're both turned out and they're moving out together. So some nice down and up movement just to maintain mobility in the hips. Now what we're just gonna add on to this is some hip hinging. So not only can we use that to help to get us down and up, it means we can pick things up when we need to bend forward. So we've had lots of nice hip work. 
So hopefully your awareness can be in your hips. I'm just going to press down into the feet. Now, separating the hip from the thigh, maybe having your hand in that hip crease. And can your pelvis just roll over the top of the thigh bones? Now there'll come a point when your hamstrings say, whoa, steady on. Stay there for a couple of breaths and then ease yourself back up. Okay, just do that a few more times. So I've kept my legs straight. Don't have to keep your legs straight. If you don't get very far because your hamstrings are super tight, then just go for where you can, or if your back might be stopping you, so then you can bend your knees if you feel that you need to do that. In fact, I tend to do both. Now we can do, again, changing what we're doing, turning the legs out a little bit. So, Noticing the range of motion when the legs are turned out a little bit. So just experiment a few more times with different positions of the legs. Maybe some straight, maybe some with the knees bent. But rather than rounding your back, because you would round the back to go all the way down. I'm not saying you can pick something up like this. You probably can. But just maintaining hips that can move. That's all. Movement in the hips. So as you could see from getting up and down, we could place the legs in loads of different positions. So now we're going to just turn one foot out. And then this side hip hinging. And if you notice, I'm not going down very far. I'm not trying to grab my hands to the floor. I'm just moving the hips in this side way, sideways. And we can do the same to the other side. So just experimenting with moving, hinging the hips in different directions. All the time, awareness is exploring, sensing and feeling as best you can. And if you go quiet, sometimes you just find that your breath naturally comes along for the rise. I'm now gonna bend a knee, add a few side hinges. So it's looking like Pasvakonasan, just simply exploring our hip hinges, movement in the hips with a knee bent. Let's go to the other side. Again, just explore, I'm not giving too much detail on your foot, I'm just saying turn your leg out, bend the knee a little bit, and then move from the hips Oh, this lovely hip work. Let's do a few more on this side. Okay, and then let's bring the feet in a little bit. I now want to move the hips side to side. So it's nice doing it from standing. And uh, if you want to explore this with a hinge, this is, in fact, I've been loving this lately. Hands down. And then just shimmy your hips from side to side. I tend to do a few with straight legs, a few bending the legs. So just exploring. Side to side, shimmy, hip sways. And then bring yourself back up. Okay, so let's bring the feet in. And then let's go down. And how easy is it to get up now after what we've just been doing? Does it feel easier, harder? No 
different. <laughs> there we have options open to us as how to get down and up. Just a few more different ways. Again, just exploring, going down and up in a few different ways. Let's end up down. Oh. So I'm gonna do our relaxing into the hips. Either holding the knees in towards the chest or holding back of the thighs. And as we've worked into the hips, can you soften again? Relax, breathe. Now, if you've just had some rumblings in your belly like I have, time to rest and digest. Just digesting that movement information. And if you want to stretch the legs out, just stretch the legs out. You could give them a bit of a shake. So just hopefully that's just some food for thought. How to get down and up, experimenting, exploring your own body. And if you just need to rest for a few moments, how do your hips feel? How does the rest of your body feel? Sometimes you might have found that quite challenging. The heart might be beating a little bit faster. Just give yourself a little bit of a rest. So you can stay here, rest and digest. When you're ready to get up, Noticing how you get up. <laughs> That's always an interesting one. Do we just suddenly go back into automated mode or can we think about how we're going to come up 